Welcome to Order Lines Ontario Building Code Quick Tips. This topic is regarding notching and drilling of framing members in residential construction. Presented by Steve Penna. Article 923.51 holds drilled and framing members. Roof, floor, and ceiling framing members are subjected to external lo bending loads applied perpendicularly. Bending stresses can cause failure for framing. The stresses are greatest on the top and bottom of the member and zero in the center. So in order to reduce the negative effects and strength of framing members, builders should only drill holes so that they are located not less than 50 millimeters from the edges and not larger than one quarter the depth of the member, unless the depth of the member is increased by the size of the hole. So that's basically reinforcing it. So you can see in this diagram that you have holes minimum 50 millimeters, two inches from the edge of the member. Just so you can see in the table, a 38 by 89 or a 2 by 4, the maximum hole size, it's not permitted. In a 38 by 140 or 2 by 6, you can, you can drill a 1 and 3 8 inch hole and not uh, damage the joists. In this photo, the wood studs were drilled for plumbing vent piping. The steel straps, which are the red arrows, are installed to prevent gypsum board screws from penetrating the plumbing piping. But the steel straps can also be used to reinforce the, the stud walls that have been excessively notched or drilled. And in this photograph, you can see that the two by fours have been notched or drilled beyond what's permitted. So as a result, reinforcing was required. Builders and diners should, should understand where and how the building code permits notching and framing members and why overnotching can lead to structural failure. Bending and shear stresses on a framing member must be considered when they're notched. The amount of bending stress at each end or support of a simply supported floor, roof, or ceiling framing member is zero. Therefore, to have the least effect on the bending strength of the member, notches should be cut into the top of the member within half the joist step from the edge of the bearing. Shear stresses on the framing member, on the other hand, are a maximum at the support. As a result, the notch at the support cannot be deeper than one third of the joist step unless the depth of the member is increased by the size of the notch. Notching is not permitted on the bottom edge of framing members since checking or cracks of the lumbers occurs severely at that location. So in our diagram, you can see the notching at the top and notice that there's no notching below, which is not permitted at all. So you can see in our table at the side, you can see a 38 by 89. The maximum distance from the notch from the edge is 44 millimeters and the ma maximum depth of the notch is 30 millimeters. In this photo, you can see how a notch at the bottom of the joist, which is the red arrows, have caused these joists to crack and thus fail. These joists were cut, notched uh, underneath, underside. And you can see right beside that plastic piping, you can see how the joists have actually failed. And in the top of the photograph, a two by four uh, strapping was provided to try to reduce the effects of the crack. But just below the two by four, you can see how the joist has cracked, basically failed. Wall studs in Article 923.53. Exterior studs must be able to re resist bending stresses from things such as wind forces and compressive strengths uh, along the vertical loading. Drilling, notching, or otherwise damaging of wall studs should be limited so that the under undamaged portion of the stud is not less than two thirds the depth of a load bearing stud or not less than 40 millimeters of the stud if it's non load bearing. If the undamaged portion of a notched or drilled stud exceeds these limits, suitable reinforcing must be provided. As noted in one of the previous photographs, the steel strapping is sometimes suitable for this purpose when dealing with non-load bearing studs. Non-load bearing studs should be provide reasonable solid support for finishes and be able to resist impact loads. Where the load bearing capacity of the stud is important, an additional stud at right angles to and immediately adjacent to the damaged stud may provide the requisite bearing capacity yet allow any service element to pass. Damaged or warped studs should be replaced, repaired, and reinforced. So in our diagram, you can see the load bearing studs must be able to resist bending stresses caused by wind forces, exterior wall studs, and compressive stress caused by vertical loading. So in our diagram on the uh, left-hand side, you can see the drill damaged wall stud is not more than one third. In this photo, these exterior stud walls have been overdrilled, which will require them to be suitably reinforced. So a two by four at uh, 90 degree angles to these two by fours would, would suffice. Roof trusses. Roof trusses comprise of one or more triangular units constructed of straight members called cords, top and bottom, and webs inside. They are required to act together as one unit. Damaging any member can cause structural failure. Roof truss mem members should not be notched, drilled, or otherwise weakened unless such notching or drilling is allowed for in the design of the truss. 
Watch for cut trusses at chimney and skylights. A professional engineer's assessment is report is required to make repairs to trusses. And here's a, our diagram. You can see you have the top cord, the webs on the inside, and the bottom cord. So any notching is not permitted in any of these locations, any of these parts of the truss. The roof trusses in this photograph are not permitted to be notched, drilled, or damaged. If they are, if they are, a professional engineer's report and assessment must be obtained to make any repairs. A general rule of thumb is if it, a, if a web member is cracked, two two by fours strapped on both sides of the the actual web from gusset plate to gusset plate is required with nails, spiral nails, three inch nails spaced one foot apart is sufficient to provide sufficient bracing for the cracked truss. For further information on compliance with part nine of the OBC, go to www.orderline.com. Thank you for watching.